Let's do it. Well, <clears throat> clear my throat a little bit there. Um, so I'm Scott Murdoch. Uh, I am KJ7LAX, like the airport. Uh, you might have heard me before on the radio. I, I tend to talk quite a bit around four, between 3.30 and 4 o'clock. Um, but uh, so one of the projects that uh, I was going to share with you guys as far as trying to build, and I was thinking of having this meeting trying to be, oh, sorry about that. My, uh, my mount for my phone got loose, so we, we dropped it. <laughs> so... But anyway, I was I was going to try to have this be more of a, a question answer than a lecture by any means. Um, so uh, first things first. Uh, so this this is the little battery that I printed. Um, I have a little voltmeter on there. I don't know if you can see the. It shows up kind of funny. But anyway, it's just a voltmeter, it reads the display. But I, I printed this, and uh, let me actually switch the view here. So here's the project. It has uh, lithium ion batteries. They are, these ones are a little bit bigger than the regular uh, 18650 batteries. Um, they're readily available if you, buy them on uh, eBay or Amazon. Um, you can't exactly get them from most retailers though. Uh, I've had to get them online uh, only. Um, let me grab my light here and show you. So there's a few components in this battery pack. Uh, we, have, we have the individual cells which they're in a series parallel connection. Um, lithium ion batteries, they produce 4.2 uh, volts per cell fully charged, which means that if you have three in series, this will probably be easier to show that uh, three in series. Um, so you can see how they're just connecting in series with one another. Um, so there's 4.2 volts when they're fully charged, and you've got uh, 12, which totals 12.6 volts when they're fully charged. Um, lithium ion batteries have some distinct advantages. Um, one of which is they weigh a lot less. Um, and so the weight is a factor, and they can also uh, charge quicker in comparison to a lead acid battery. Um, that being said, there are some things to be concerned about. Um, so you can charge lithium ion batteries uh, very quickly. They'll take the amperage uh, basically almost as fast as they'll discharge, they, they will charge. Uh, the problem is, is they can get hot uh, pretty quickly. Um, for that reason, uh, they have what's called a, uh, it's a little charge controller. Um, these don't really cost too much. Um, I've got, uh, let's see, um, so a pack of uh, five of them uh, cost me, I think it was like $12 for a pack of five. Uh, so it was really quite, quite cheap. Um, but this uh, regulates voltage and current. Um, so like I had mentioned before, lithium ion batteries really love the amperage, um, which is good and bad. Uh, the bad part is if you just connect lithium ion battery to uh, a power source, say a battery, um, it would flow enough amperage that it would get hot enough and actually breach the cell and could explode. So, I mean, you need to be able to, uh, I just gotta 
a notification that someone's trying to get into the meeting? Can is there something we need to do to let them in? Uh, can anybody respond there? <laughs> Remember the push to talk. Yeah, well, everybody's muted, but um, yeah, I got a notification that they were waiting to join the meeting. Um, is there, you said there can be 90 people, right? So is there, uh, can you think of any hangups maybe why they can't get in? Currently up to 13 and as quick as they come up, I, I admit them. Oh, okay. Well, that'll work. Um, <clears throat> So this uh, is designed to, uh, one of its functions is to be able to charge lithium ion batteries. Uh, there are two potentiometers. Um, let me grab a little screwdriver here. So one of these, you actually set the desired charge voltage. So like I had mentioned before, the 12.6 is what we would charge these batteries to, which is uh, 4.2 volts, um, which is, is on the maximum side. Um, a lot of over voltage uh, protections for the lithium ion batteries would come into play at 4.28 volts. So we're only talking uh, eight hundredths of a volt, you know, difference there. So you, you set that at the maximum charge level. Um, you can set a little bit lower than that as well. So for instance, you could go maybe the, the 12.5, which isn't gonna, it's gonna be more like 4.18 um, to be fully charged. Just know that, that higher, the higher voltage that you go, that's one of the limiting factors on how many cycles they'll last. Um, so if you can keep that just a little bit lower, you'll get more cycles out of the batteries. Um, the other one uh, limits amperage, which is kind of a cool concept because most of the time amperage is limited by the load, right? So for instance, if you have a, a resistor, you know, the amount of current in that circuit is determined by the resistor. Well, in this particular circuit, um, the voltage coming in isn't exactly the the, uh, the voltage going out because it has this inductor and they actually have a frequency on this inductor and it actually will they they call this a boost buck converter and a boost buck converter can actually step up dc voltage so for instance you can have 10 volts going into it and 12 volts going out of it how is that possible, you say? Uh, it's because of this inductor. It's actually stepping up, you taking this DC, changing it to AC via the inductor, and then reinverting it to DC to actually charge. Um, anyway, because of that circuit, that these two circuits, the input and the output, aren't necessarily direct connection, you can limit the output wattage or amperage uh, via this potentiometer so for instance this the battery that i built i've got it set to charge at two amps and, and uh, then charge to uh, 12.6 volts um, the the next component on my battery is uh, this board which is a little bit harder to see. Uh, this board costs, uh, I got two boards for $10, so like $5 a piece. And this board, uh, it actually will charge the batteries in series or individual cells, and it discharges them uh, in a series connection. Um, and it, it also has some protections in it. Um, it has a uh, an over current protection and an under voltage cutoff. Uh, one thing about lithium ion batteries is you don't want to over discharge them. Um, you can 
you can actually, that particular board, once it reaches uh, the discharge level, it will shut off. So it'll actually open the circuit, um, which is kind of nice if you're not around and you're running something. Um, for instance, I, I run this, uh, I built this battery. One of the purposes is to run my uh, CPAP machine um, when I'm camping. Uh, this particular battery that I built is a nine amp hour battery. Um, and it will run my CPAP for about nine hours. Um, and with this particular battery, um, since it's a lithium ion, you can actually discharge them close to 80 to 90% of that amp hour rating. Um, lead acid batteries, they don't recommend discharging more than 50%. Um, so in comparison, if I was to get uh, a nine amp hour lead acid battery, um, it would not do the same capacity as this battery, even though they're, they're both nine amp hours. <clears throat> because of the simple fact you don't want to discharge your lead acid battery more than 50%, which makes your nine amp hour battery actually uh, four, four and a half amp hours. Um, which is substantially less. Um, and so that's another advantage to, to the lithium ions. Um, I actually got these lithium ion batteries from uh, some power tools. So for instance, let me grab this. Uh, let me switch the camera view. So this is a Makita battery pack. Um, I found that uh, your lithium ion batteries, these are in a series parallel circuit as well. Um, so we have five cells that are in series and then they're in a parallel circuit. So there's a total of 10 cells, but they're, the two are put in parallel. So they're just side by side. And you can see these, uh, they have stainless steel little tabs that are spot welded in place. Um, I did see that you can actually build a spot welder uh, to assemble these that's not, uh, not too bad to build. Um, basically you get a starter relay and you have uh, a, a car battery, and then you have a, a push button. And essentially, you run the, the car battery up with some like 10 gauge wire uh, to the starter relay. And then you, you can, uh, you have some little terminals that change the, the two conductors to a copper nails is what I seen and then actually push hot nails down and hold it down and then you just tap momentarily tap the starter relay uh, with a push button and then you uh, spot weld um, and I haven't built that yet but uh, this particular battery I built um, I soldered the uh, the ends on there um, which can reduce the life of the batteries um, it was my first one and I'll, once I build this spot welder, I'll, I'll do it that way. But, uh, but so far it's worked fine uh, to be able to solder those together. Um, just know that you want to do it quickly with, with a hot iron. Um, so you want to make that as quick as possible, like, like most soldering jobs. Um, So, uh, first of all, do I have any questions? I've gone through quite a bit of material. Is there any questions that, uh, that anybody has? Yeah, Scott, the, uh, the, the um, uh, two boards, you know, the boards that you bought, you bought one of them a package of several and another a package of two. Do you have the part numbers of where they got bought, bought from? Oh, okay. The the little charge controllers. Um, I yeah, got 
charge controller as well as the uh, the uh, what's the, the other one that prevents the, the you know handles the discharge rate. Uh, yes, Th this part number is kind of long. Um, maybe I can uh, either share it in an email. I took a. I can share my screen, can't I? Yeah, um, you certainly can share your screen. I'm now. Because anyway, I, I have it in the history on Amazon uh, that would show the part numbers. Um, is there any other questions while, uh, while I look up those part numbers? I'll Scott, be off this is Shane Green. Oh, I. Go ahead, Shane. Thanks. I do have a couple of questions. Um, by the way, I'm up in Morgan, and uh, I just heard about this meeting today on the air while I was listening to your repeater. And uh, Roland sent me an invitation. Thank you for that. Um, what I'm wondering about first is the two boards that you showed us they're both inside of that box that printed 3d printed box that you showed us is that correct uh, one of them is external one of them is just for charging the battery um, had I built it again I would probably try to put both of them inside and, and then have your regular DC uh, power adapter cord because basically all you need to do is supply it a DC voltage um, to be able to charge the battery. So okay. if I got port, then I could just put in the cord and charge them that way. It would be a little simpler. So that, yeah, you're starting to answer my second question now about uh, the charging options that you have. Um, it sounds like you can charge them from another battery, like plug them into your car, and uh, maybe from a wall wart of the right uh, size from your house. And uh, is there a solar charging option with this setup, or would that require more components? Um, actually, solar charging would be fairly simple. The only thing to worry about is that you don't exceed the, the maximum DC input voltage on this little board. Because essentially this little board is taking the voltage in and stepping it down uh, to be able to charge, charge the battery. So it's kind of acting like a charge controller if you're familiar with that, with uh, solar panels. Um, I, I have actually charged some lithium ion batteries via my charge controller, um, but I was careful not to fully discharge them because it's kind of cool to watch this little guy um, because, uh, actually, why don't I show you guys real quick, but there, there are two lights. There's one light that shows it's in amperage limiting, and there's another light that shows that it's in voltage limiting circuits, uh, cycle. Um, so there's a, a, green, a blue and so let me see if I can hold my phone and put this in. Okay. So right now, my battery was mostly charged, so we are just in the uh, the voltage limiting cycle. But uh, there's another LED next to it that's uh, that's red for the current uh, limiting cycle. So when you first start to charge them, when they're completely dead, you'll be in the current limiting, and then when they get near full, then you'll be in the voltage limiting cycle. Uh, does that answer your question? Oh, yeah. Thank you very much. 
Okay. Uh, let's see. Do we have any other questions? Oh, yes, actually, Scott. This is Roland. So what I think I understand is is that that uh, is taking input voltage something above four volts or something, and you're stepping it down. This like four point two or four point five volts. Is that right? Uh, I am charging with 12 volts. It's that board that's actually soldered into the battery. Uh huh. Um, oh, actually, I have another one. I just remembered. I can give you a better, better shot of it. Um, oh, it's in my other one. Because on, on the board itself, there's battery terminals, and then there's a charging side, and then there are separate wires that go to individual batteries. Uh, okay. Yeah, so the other one I haven't, I haven't used yet. Let's see. Uh, there is the part number there, if uh, the X zero zero one X Johnny so Apple. Who'd you order these from? Uh, uh, I just got these from Amazon. I see. What was that? You're kind of breaking up a little. Okay, so this is the this is the board that's with the batteries, and uh, I'm kind of okay. Let me just zoom in a little, so you can see the uh, the battery plus and battery uh, minus. So they're diagonal, and the uh, so there's these two here, the P, P plus and P, let me grab uh, my little pointer go. Boom. Here, I'll just use this. Okay, so this one, this is the output to the load side. I would mentioned before that it will actually disconnect from the battery and which is why you have to have a separate circuit for the load side and then these three how it has b1 and b2 those are actually so this is one cell so one cell voltage so we'd get 4.2 volts here and then you'd get uh this would be the end of the other cell and then this one would be eight point something volts you know so two two battery cells and a total of three is what you get for the 12.6 volts um but yeah that's that's this little board oh well that's a little easier <laughs> if i looked at the back side it would actually tell you so you, you this is your ground side and then you've got 3.7 volts that's one series connection and then 0.4 is the other series and then the 11 one is what you get uh for your nominal voltages uh so do we have any questions on this particular board so that's the output voltages is that right uh those are the cell voltages and it's based on 3.7 volts so my better So, um, your your internet connection or something just froze up, Scott. We did this one. Oh, did it? Did uh, how's 
How's that? Did it, is it still working? Okay, you came back, but uh, everything you had to say about that other board went by the by. Oh, okay. Well, anyway, I was just talking about the nominal voltage of the batteries. Um, because this 11.1, that's based on each cell being uh, 3.7 volts. Um, and 3.7 volts is basically the middle of the lithium ion batteries scale. Um, so well, that board is connected. You got three, you, you know, those three terminals, the B1, B2, B3, whatever they are, connect to the batteries. But the P is your output, and that's connect to your load, right? That is correct. And I and I charge on those peak connectors as well. Okay. So, so I don't that, have. So that's series. both your input and your output. Sure. Yes. And then and then the other board. You're just using it, that one to set the proper voltage going, proper voltage and current going into those P connectors. That that is correct. Um, and and I'm kind of I'm double protected on this particular battery. Um, I don't necessarily have to have that voltage cutoff board and the charge controller. Um, I chose to do that just because of my my CPAP machine. I wanted to make sure that it would disconnect. Um, but later on, my my power inverter will disconnect anyway. So I kind of have a double redundancy, um, honestly. Let me show you guys that. Here, I'll switch views. So right now, I have, so this is my battery and I've got it connected to a little uh, 150 watt uh, power inverter. And this is what I run my CPAP machine with. Uh, it also has a USB charger on it. Um, and let me show you something that's kind of neat. I have an oscilloscope over here. And let me just set this down while I. So I'm going to plug the oscilloscope in to this power inverter uh, so you can see the waveform that it creates. Oh. Here, let me go to the mirror and select the AC. Okay, so can you guys see that very, let me turn the back. Uh, oh, I got a lot of clear, don't I? That's what's called a modified sine wave. See how uh, we've got these blocks? Oh yeah. Yeah. Boy. Did your CPAP machine run all right on that? It it did. It I didn't have any problems at all. My particular CPAP machine though, it actually runs on DC voltage. And so it's just taking this voltage and stepping it down. Uh it's actually like 20 volts DC that my CPAP runs on. So, I mean, it, it's kind of a waste of power to step up and then step down for it. Um, but that's, that's how I had it anyway, working. Um, the, the better option would be to, uh, to go straight DC, uh, but then I'd have to have a special plug to be able to plug into it. Um, they do make uh, full sine wave power inverters. Um, and a lot of people say that you have to have a full sine wave power inverter to run uh, like a CPAP machine. Um, I haven't had any issues, uh, but can you see the difference in the waveform? See, this is a full 
sine wave uh, power inverter um, made by uh, Accurate Tools. But uh, anyway, you can see the waveform there. It's actually uh, just as good as if I were to plug it in the wall. Um, actually, I'll just do that so that you can see the, the difference, uh, if there's any difference. Um, yeah. So the waveform is basically the same. I didn't notice any difference. Um, but it looks like there it's two volts higher on the on the voltage. So that's what I've what I've done with this battery pack. Um, there's also other options. Um, like this one is just a set of cells uh, that are in a series parallel, and I've soldered on a. a it's an XT60 connector. I kind of like these connectors just because they slide together and they're rated at 40 amps. Um, so they work kind of nice uh, for this sort of stuff. And I got um, I got uh, 10 connectors, male and female, um, off Amazon as well for uh, I think it was 10 bucks. Um, so that that wasn't very much at all, really. And one of the options that I was wanting to have was a, a lighting option. Um, so for instance, this, I can just plug it in. And then this is an LED uh, uh, floodlight um, that runs off this little battery. Uh, and it pulls this LED light is a 10 watt uh, LED. And as you can see, you get quite a lot of light out of it. Um, and I've, I've 3D printed the case for it. Um, I don't know if you guys have heard about 3D printing. Um, I know that uh, Roland has a 3D printer. Um, I'd like to talk just a little bit about uh, 3D printing. Uh, and kind of what I've done. Um, so with uh, with the 3D printer, it enables you to to basically print almost anything you want. Um, if if you're interested, I go to uh, Thingiverse.com, and at Thingiverse.com, you can actually download and print stuff. There's over, I think they're up to 4 million different things. And there's a lot of ham radio stuff. There's a lot of, uh, oh, everything under the sun. I, I saw a little sundial that would take the sun and shine it through lots of very small pinholes and read out a digital clock. Uh, that was one thing I wanted to print. And uh, there's another guy that actually built a, a um, an electric, motor that had solar panels on it and made electromagnets that it would actually hover from magnets and then he'd shine a light on it and it would turn and the motor would go around. I'm like, wow, that is just amazing, you know, to be able to to make and, and build stuff like that. Um, but uh, so for the most part, you can download and you can print all sorts of things. And for the most part, I did that for a long time and I never actually designed anything. Um, I did find from a friend um, that uh, Fusion 360 is a 3D modeling program uh, that you can have for free if you use it for personal use only. Um, you can't sell anything with your 3D printer that you print. Uh, well, there's a little speculation. I think you have to make less than like $2,000 per year and you can still qualify for that. Um, but with Fusion 360, uh, then I was able to do some design work for some of the things that I couldn't just download and print. Um, one of the things, let me show you here real quick, is uh, this. Um, 
this, so I have a Bofang radio. Um, I don't have a, a, a permanent radio or a 50 watt radio uh, installed yet. And, but, but what I do have is, so I printed this little guy um, with the Fusion 360. I watched some videos on how to do it. And basically, you just draw it out, this shape, you draw it out in snap lines. So they're all straight lines that go across when you're actually doing it on the computer. And I measured it with calipers. And then you just stretch it into 3D. So you draw the perimeter, what you want it to look like, and then you stretch it into 3D. And when you do that, uh, then you can also add in, I added in uh, some slots here for, for some copper tabs, which I then hooked. Uh, this is a, another boost buck converter. And what this is, is it allows me to charge my radio while I'm using my radio, my Bofeng radio. Uh, and so this just goes in the 12 volt cigarette lighter. And this slips on the back end of the radio. And I have this charge controller uh, set to the 8.2 volts um, that the Bofeng radio wants to charge and I just built this uh, little charge charger for my Bofeng radio. Um, so those are some of the possibilities and I've printed these as well. This actually holds the, the cells. You can print these or you can buy them. Um, you can print these for about 10 cents or so. It doesn't really cost much to, to 3D print stuff, which is another exciting thing about it. Um, and anyway, then you just uh, snap it together, and then I actually built some covers that go over the sides. And that's, that's how I built uh, this battery. Um, let's uh, open it up for questions. Um, do we have, have any questions? Yeah, I just all I want to do is know how to what I'm what I'm going to go order off of Amazon. And what you're going to order off Amazon? <laughs> That's right. Here, let me. Uh, I'm still here, but I'm going to my programs, and I'm going to try to open up Amazon. Let me switch to share content. Share screen. Uh, That's interesting. If you can just hold that package up, I can screenshot it and then I can. Oh, yeah, yeah, that would probably be easier. Um, uh, let me go back to. Okay. Huh. Okay, let's switch the view here. So, can you see that, or is it dark? Oh, hold it for hold it still for a second. Okay, I got it. Okay, and then this is the other part number for the this board, um, 
which you may or you don't absolutely have to have. It just gives you another layer of protection. Okay, I got it. Uh, I'll just email that to Roland. He can shoot it out to everybody. Okay. Great, thank you. That will work. Um, but I've I've liked uh, that battery. Um, one thing that's nice about it is this battery weighs like three to four pounds. Um, you can take it hiking with you. <laughs> you know, it doesn't weigh very much at all. Uh, I think my my CPAP machine it weighs more than that does. Um, so that's that's definitely an advantage if you like the outdoors and. Uh, of course, you could uh, power your, your ham radio with it or whatever you want to with, with 12 volts. Um, real quick, you can you can buy new batteries off uh, uh, a lot of the websites, uh, Amazon or eBay. Um, I just wanted to mention real quick that uh, as of right now, the 3,500 milliamp hour is the maximum that an 18650 battery can do. But be aware on uh, on eBay, you'll find lots of them that are like, oh, they're 10,000 milliamp hour. They're lying. <laughs> they don't exist. Um, so be aware of that. Uh, I didn't know that initially. And basically, they're, they're 10,000 milliamp hour comes out as a thousand milliamp hour and you just drop off a zero. Uh, um, the some of the batteries that uh, I did a, a Google search for the batteries and some of the ones that uh, there's an this one is an LG battery. Um, you want to get a screenshot of that part number as well but uh, this is an LG battery and it's uh, rated at 2000 milliamp hour, I believe. Okay, um, I got it. And these ones run you around between three and four dollars a piece. Um, so they're not really too bad price wise. Um, As far as getting the supplies. <clears throat> um, oh, there's one other thing I was going to show you, everybody. Uh, for my camper, I actually put uh, some solar panels on and I just made them so they fold. They're on hinges and they're two panels side by side and then they, they fold open and then they lock open. And then I just have a, a leg that goes out so that I can uh, move my solar panels around during the day so I can get full power any time of the day, which is kind of cool because uh, right at sunset, you can get full power. <laughs> Most of the time you can't do that, but if you can point your, uh, your solar panels right at the sun, you can do just that. Um, this, I, I printed this little holder to put it in, but uh, so this reads out the, the battery voltage and amperage. Um, this point two is actually charging. Um, but the cool thing about it is it will actually tell you uh, the, the amp hours. So for instance, this amp hour is at zero. That means it's fully charged. And when it discharges, it will count down in amp hours. So it subtracts, and then when you charge it, it puts it back. And you enter in your amp hours, and then it will show you this uh, percentage of battery. So right now, I have two uh, camping six volt batteries uh, from, a, from a golf cart anyway. And they're 225 amp hours but I only want to use 100 amp hours of that. So I have this set at 100 amp hours. Um, some of the useful things that I learned is, for instance, um, I learned when I used my furnace and it was 34 degrees outside in my tent trailer, I used 30 amp hours uh, at night just to stay uh, 
50, 54 degrees uh, to stay anyway inside that. And when I, I have two, 200 watts of solar and on a cloudy day, I was able to put 20 amp hours of that back. But on a sunny day, I was able to, to put back that 30 amp hours in by noon. Um, and the nice part is, is it lets you know, okay, well, I can, I can use this X amount of power, you know, depending on what I'm doing. You know, I can, I can do something else with my, my batteries, you know, and still have enough power for other stuff. Um, so it just helps you manage, just like uh, having a, a fuel gauge in your car. Okay, uh, do we have any more questions? Scott, that was actually quite interesting. Thank you. And everybody else is on the line here. All of you have projects of one sort or another. Um, this is an easy way to do a project. It's also an easy way for you to give us a tour of your shack. Show us what your antennas look like, um, you know, or, or other kinds of things. So I'm expecting some of you to volunteer to, uh, to be the next uh, Zoom video star. Well, if, if we got time, I'll show you my latest battery project. We got time. Okay. <laughs> let me let me switch the camera here and and real quick this is uh my solar heater for my shed uh i heat my shed via the sun uh have some black felt with plexiglass over it and it'll heat 20 degrees warmer than the outside air okay this this is my battery project let me show you that i just uh pop the plug in for Anderson connectors into a GI can and then uh, we'll see if I can get I got those uh, lead acid batteries that go in uh, uh, UPS systems all hooked together in parallel and it is fused so I can't use too much power then I can also store all the cables in there. But then if I want to charge it, all I do is just plug into the Anderson connector. It's got, uh, these are all hooked in parallel. Hook it up to 13.8 volts and it charges right up. Wow. That's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. I just made that. I'm going to put a solar controller inside the box shortly. <clears throat> so that way I can hook up a, another connector for, for charging from the solar panel. Cool, cool. Now we just need to get our solar panels mounted on the top of that trailer. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we actually need to get with the program here. Okay, Rob, you got anything you want to add? No, it was very interesting to see what he had there. Thanks, Scott. I appreciate it. Just hoping maybe we can get a uh, diagram for how you put everything together, the wiring diagram and that. I think that would help for those of us that uh, don't have the brains to figure it out on our own. Anyone else have anything they want to add? As far as the diagram, uh, there's one on Amazon as well that shows you how to connect it up. Um, the probably the only part that needed a diagram was was this little guy, uh, which is kind of optional if you want that protection. Um, uh, one thing, Norm, uh, you could actually use one of these uh, charge controllers to charge your lead acid battery as well because uh, it would regulate that voltage right where you want to charge it to and then it will also limit the amount of current flow up to and it's rated a certain wattage i can't remember off the top of my head if you want to be able to use the same port to be able to charge your batteries via solar 
or uh, a wall wart or even from another a DC battery source. Yeah, actually, what I've got some uh, uh, solar controllers that uh, that I can hook up to any power source. Uh, you just have to make sure that the battery is hooked up first. Then you can plug it into a solar panel, or you can plug it into a my car um, battery charger, and I'll actually put juice into the batteries and charge them up with that. Uh, but it's out in the garage, not where I'm. You know, take you 20 minutes to get out there. Uh, I'll show you. I'll show you next time we do, do one of these. I'll show you with a charge controller hooked up to it. I haven't got that done yet, so. All right, so we're almost right at an hour. <laughs> Anybody else have anything else? We're gonna. This has been recording. I recorded this whole thing, so I'm gonna, you know, I'll render it and I'll put it up on the website on the uh, YouTube channel, and uh, put that out on on the website as well as on on uh, uh, Facebook. What the link to the uh, to the recording is. It takes about an hour for it to render after the after one hour meeting is over the uh so anybody else has anything raise your hand now otherwise we're going to shut the meeting down and i'll see you on the air at 9 p.m for our weekly net thanks scott good job thanks for all in this rob take care thanks scott Yeah, you're welcome. Uh, had fun doing it. It's uh, a little different doing it this way for sure. But uh, at least everybody can be home and uh, everybody can be in their shacks, which is kind of cool. Thanks, Scott. Hey, nice, nice uh, video, Roger. That's my iPad. Yeah, but it works a little better in your computer for video, for video, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, I'm going to shut the meeting down.